Hey, thanks for dropping by and checking out this message. These lessons come from our Sunday gatherings at Victory Christian Church in Franklin, Indiana. Our 5th through 8th graders meet at 9 or 10.30 a.m. and our high schoolers meet from 6 to 8 p.m. If you find that this content brings value to your life, then please consider subscribing and hitting that bell so that you can be notified when we upload our next message. Our hope is that this video brings more clarity into your life as to who God is and what He wants for you in light of who Jesus is and what He's done for you. Enjoy and have a great day. All right, how are we doing this morning? It's a new year, it's a new decade, and it is Sunday, it's a new week. So let me hear this again. How are you guys doing? There we go. That's a little bit better, a little better. I'll let you fly with that. We're going to stand up and we're going to do a little activity. So we're going to get your blood pumping. So go ahead and stand up. And here, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Okay? If, if you, we're, we're starting this brand new series called Follow. So, so I want to try a little experiment. Um, I'm going to put up some, some, some famous people, some that are real, some that are not, some that are worth following, some that are not. And, and I'm just curious if you would be one that would follow this person if they ran for president, if they were to take over the world and you, you know, had to choose to follow or hide or wh whatever you do, I want to, I want to find out who would follow these people. So can you guys help me? Okay. Yes. Can you guys help me? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to put up a picture on the screen and if you would follow that person, I want you to stand strong on your chair, what? loud and proud. No, I'm just kidding. That's dangerous. We're not going to do that. But I want you, I just wanted to make sure you're paying attention. I want you to stand so if you wouldn't follow that person, sit down. But stay standing if you would follow that person. Okay? Okay. Simple enough. Okay. So if you would follow Steph Curry, stay standing. On to the basketball court. Whoa! There goes everybody. That's kind of sad. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Stand back up. This was a little bit better, in my opinion. Stay standing if you would follow Darth Vader. Come on, did you see Rogue One? I wouldn't want to be on the opposite side of that guy. He, he does, I mean, he does turn to the good side at the end, so spoiler alert. <laughs> okay, stand up, let's try another one. Stay standing if you would follow T. Swifty. Taylor Swift. Okay, this is good. This is, I have hope for humanity. Okay, this is good. <laughs> okay, stand back up and stay standing if you would follow Chris Pratt. <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy, Andy Dwyer from Parks and Rec. Also knows how to control raptors. So that's a good skill to have in life. So, okay, okay. How, how about Kid President? Oh, yeah. Yes. Anybody follow Kid President? Yeah. I'd follow that Kid President. All right, all right. How about, how about, you can, you can take this as like, you know, the fictional character that he plays or for the person. Who would follow Tom Holland? Who thinks Tom Holland is the best Spider-Man? Okay. I, I'll respect your decisions. Okay, thank you guys for playing. You can go ahead and grab a seat. <laughs> so, so this, this is just a, a fun, silly little activity. Just, just because we, we get used to the idea of following people all the time, right? We, we follow people, we follow things, we follow ideas, we follow ways of thinking. And, and sometimes we, we conscious, consciously do it. Sometimes we don't realize that we're doing it until someone points it out to us. Or then we realize that we've been following something for a long time that doesn't make any sense. So we all follow things. And, and some, sometimes we follow things that are worthy of being followed. Sometimes we follow things that really we should be following. And, and, and the idea of following is not new to us, but we Christianize the word follow all the time. 
Uh, we, we talk about uh, in church like following Jesus. We talk about following the right path, you know, following God's voice. We talk about following all the time in that context. And for whatever reason, when we put it in that context, it, it isn't as tangible as it is when we think about following somebody that we actually know, right? I mean, how cool would it be to actually know Darth Vader or Chris Pratt? But, you know, uh, for, for many of you, you have friends, you have, you have parents, you have people in your life that are worth following and people you know that you do follow. Even, even sometimes we follow people we don't like because it's the rules, right? And so we, we follow people, but if there's anything that's true about the idea of following people is that who we choose to follow can greatly impact our life, right? Who or what we follow can greatly impact our lives. It can change the tra trajectory of, I can't say that word, it can change the trajectory of our lives forever. Who we follow matters. It makes a difference. It, it defines who we are. It kind of sets the standard for our actions. You know, when I was um, in middle school, so I, I went to a basketball camp every summer at Ozark Christian College in Joplin, Missouri. And it was a lot of fun because one, I liked basketball. Two, I liked the friends that went with me. And three, I liked staying on a college campus in the dorms, you know, eating junk food till one in the morning because my parents weren't there to tell me to go to sleep. And it was awesome. And we didn't have smartphones. So we literally entertained ourselves with all sorts of stuff. Some of it was awesome. Some of it was really stupid. And so one of the things that we were doing was it was late at night, it's probably like midnight. And so all of us junior high guys in a dorm in our own rooms decided Let's go flick people with towels. So we got our towels. We wet them down, of course, because it hurts more that way. And then we wrapped them up and, and we started like walking to each other's rooms and, and we'd knock on their door and they'd come out and smack and you'd get it run off. And so what does that do? Obviously it eggs them on to do the same thing. So they get their towel, they come and they're like, wait, you're just better. I'm gonna go to the sink and wet mine down and then start falling. And so that's, that's I don't know how it started, but, but somebody did that and I was in my room minding my own business, eating my Reese's Pieces, and somebody knocks on the door, and it happens to us, you know? So, so I, before you know it, the whole dorm hall is like screaming junior high boys flicking each other with towels and random, ah! like, like here and there. And so like, I'm thinking this is not good because it's late and we're gonna get in trouble for this. But everyone kept doing it and nobody was getting in trouble yet. So I thought, I'm getting in on this. I start doing it, and right as I wait by the bathroom for somebody to come out, and I just, she was the loudest snap. It was like, I was so talented. I felt so proud of myself. It was one of those, like, the water sprayed off as soon as you do it. It's like, and right as I did that, I turned around and noticed the dorm dad, the, the adult, was there. It's like, everybody quiet and in your rooms, and yelled really loud. And it sounded more epic than that and scary. And I, screamed like a little girl and ran into my room and shut the door and locked it hoping he didn't see me right in front of him flick that dude with the towel and and uh, of course i thought maybe well maybe that's the end of it well the next day um we we got we started the camp and uh the the coach up at the front goes okay we had an issue in the guys dorm last night how many of you participated in the towel fight and then slowly hands started to go up. And like half the room, hands were up. And I was like, I, I only got one good flick in, so that doesn't count. But then my conscience was like speaking in my head. It's like, once is enough, you participated. And I, so I'm like, no, it wasn't enough. I'm not gonna raise my hand because I'm gonna get in trouble. I'm like, but I did, but, but oh, I follow Jesus, okay. I raised my hand, you know, the guilt. And, uh, and I got in trouble for it. And I wished in that moment I'd just followed my instinct and not given in and done what everybody else was doing, but I wasn't strong enough, I guess. <laughs> so I just did what everybody was doing and it was fun for the two seconds that it lasted, but then I had to pay for it later. In fact, we had to run a lot more and do a lot of like exercises that does not involve a basketball or shooting and it was painful. And I remember that for the rest of my life. And for the rest of my life, I decided I am not going to give in to something just because a bunch of idiots are doing the same thing, right? And so sometimes life is black and white like that, sometimes it's not. And so who we follow and who we choose to follow impacts our life in an extremely great way. Now, one thing and one decision that I can say I'm most proud of is choosing to follow Jesus. I got baptized when I was your guys' age. I decided to follow Christ with my life and I knew that, that meant his priorities came before mine. 
And, and so uh, I didn't understand everything at the time. I still don't. I'm still learning, still growing. But I can promise you without a shadow of doubt that that was the best decision, decision that I made with my entire life was to follow Jesus. Now, one thing that can change your life in a huge way is that decision to follow Jesus. And, and when we talk about following Jesus, it simply means choosing to believe in him, first off. Okay? Second of all, uh, second of all it, it involves living our lives the way that he taught us. So reading through the Gospels, reading through what Jesus actually said and taught, and, and practicing those same things. It, and thirdly, the, basically it just means that you follow his lead in the way that you live your life. So, so not only do you, do you just believe that there's a God and that he sent his son and his name was Jesus, but you live the way that he taught and, and you follow his lead. So rather than following our own inclinations, our own instincts in the moment of a towel fight or any other decision, we choose to first filter that through a decision. Is this... Is this what Jesus would want for my life? And, and we filter it, we follow his lead that way. And so many of us, uh, many of us have done that. We've given our lives to him. Many of us are baptized. Uh, many of us are not. Uh, some of you in the room, you, maybe you're not even sure that you believe in this or that you want to have a faith in a God that you can't see. And, and you know, everybody starts somewhere, but some of us are all in, in different Places We're on different ends of the spectrum, and that's, that's okay. We're, we're, we're all learning. We're growing. I hope you make a decision to, to start having faith in Jesus because it's changed my life, and I've seen it change a lot of other people's lives. But we all got to start somewhere. And so for many of us, uh, the, the hang-up, the biggest struggle, whether, whether we believe yet or we don't, the biggest struggle that many of us wrestle with when it comes to following Jesus is that it seems like it's just a lot of rules to follow. It's a lot of do's, it's a lot of don'ts. Do this, don't do that. It sounds limiting, it sounds like, like you can't actually live life the way that you want or have fun or, or any of those things. It, and sometimes if we're honest, when we think about Christianity, we think about following Jesus, in our minds we reduce it to, there's things I can do and things I can't do and I just have to follow the rules. Following Jesus equals following the rules. For, for some of us, it's just a bunch of things that we have to do for him. It's a bunch of things that we can't do because we're doing for Jesus. And, and so that's, that's restraining, that's limiting, and, and a lot of us have issues with that. Either, either we don't put, on our, put our faith in him because of those things, or we live our life as Christians in a way that is limiting because we're not viewing our relationship with God in, in the way that he actually set it up to be. You know, as, as humans, many of us are prone to something called mistakes, and we make them a lot. And so somewhere along the way, if we think that it's just about following rules and a bunch of the things we're supposed to do, then what happens inevitably when we fall short is it really just makes us kind of want to quit. Maybe not now, maybe not tomorrow, but eventually, sometimes we get to a point where it's just not worth it anymore. I can't live up to that standard. And it just makes us want to quit. It makes us want to just drop the act, stop trying. And, you know, people said fake it till you make it, but I'm not making it, so I'm going to stop faking it, and I'm going to walk my own way. It makes us want to quit when we reduce following Jesus to following just a bunch of rules. And it's kind of sad. It's kind of depressing. And, and you guys know this because if you have anybody in your life that you feel like you're constantly just having to win their approval, it's exhausting. Because... It seems like no matter what you do, they're always going to find something that you're not doing right. And it's an impossible standard to live up to. And so for some of you, maybe there's people in your life that you, you can relate with that. It's, it's hard to try to live up to the expectations of somebody else. And, and you hate feeling like you're letting them down. And, and so maybe there's, there's a gap between you and that person. And that's, that's the way you view God. There's this gap and there's this brick wall between you and him because of the things you can't live up to. So uh, I want to dive into the book of Luke. This is, this is a gospel Luke wrote down. Uh, he, you know, he, he did a lot of research and, and uh, talked to a lot of the witnesses and, and found out the things that Jesus said. And as he's writing, he tells us this story about two sisters that lived a couple thousand years ago. And here's, here's what happens. It says, As Jesus and the disciples continued in their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. 
Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come help me. But the Lord said to her, Dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There's one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. See, the, the difference is Martha, she, she was kind of, she was about the work. Mary was about the relationship. And, and the difference that Jesus is noting here is he's not saying, Martha, we're not hungry. We'll never be hungry. Stop making dinner, right? He appreciated the work that she was doing. But in, in the effort to make the dinner and to do all the work, Martha was missing the point of him being there. Jesus wasn't there to just eat the dinner they prepared for, them, for him. He was there to have a relationship with them. So Martha was about the work and she kind of missed the relationship. Mary had her head on straight and was thinking about the relationship. And, and let me tell you, that, that's where many of us miss the thing. We, we think that we're just supposed to be doing all these things for God and, and in the midst of doing all these things, it's not like God doesn't want us to do those things. In fact, he does. But when we miss him for the sake of doing those things, we miss the point. And just to be really transparent with you, that's my biggest struggle. I struggle with being a Martha because I'm a student pastor. And so I do a lot of work to prepare to talk to you guys, to prepare for Sunday mornings, to prepare for events that we're going to do. And, and I love doing it. But sometimes I get so distracted by those things and doing things for God that I forget to do things with God. See, our, when it comes to following Jesus, it means having a relationship with him. So as you guys get ready to start a new year, a new decade, a new season of life, I want you to recognize that your, your life following Jesus is much more than, than what you do or don't do. It's about the person you do it with and the person you do it, you, you do it with, the people you do it with. In an effort to follow Jesus, it means having a relationship with him. It means spending time with him. It means getting to know his heart. See, if we just focus uh, on, on building our relationship with Jesus, that will fix so many of our issues of feeling like we're not enough, feeling like we can never live up to an impossible standard. If we could just focus on having a relationship with Jesus, I think that would truly change our lives. So uh, maybe, maybe for some of you, you, you're really good at journaling. And so you, you can spend time writing things down. It helps you process. And, and if you read a, a verse in scripture, you can make, you know, you pull up you version. Uh, many of you have phones or iPods or something or access to a computer where you can look up just the verse of the day. And if you just read that verse and you, you journal something about it, maybe for, for some of you writing that down, it helps you spend time with them and clarify your thoughts. Some of you, it's just putting those headphones in, listening to worship music, and focusing on the truths that God is good and He loves us. And for, for some of you, it might mean like taking a walk outside. If you're like me, that's you know, being out in nature and being out in the fresh air. It just, it just helps rejuvenate my soul as I spend time in prayer with God. So, so I don't know what it is for you. You can have some time in small group to talk about what some of those things might be. But following Jesus means having a relationship with Him, not just doing a bunch of things. For him, And we're going to talk about that a little bit more in depth over the next couple weeks as we dive into this series. But as you guys get ready to go to your small groups, I want you to think about this. What's one thing about following Jesus that feels like work to me? I want you to think about that question. Uh, let me pray for you and you guys be dismissed to your small groups. Hey, hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed so you're notified when we upload future videos. Have a great day.